Hey guys, welcome to the film room. A lot of you have heard me talk about the gap theory and I'm going to show it to you in real time. And it's all about getting the best shots in basketball which statistically are layups and dunks and high percentage threes. And the way the gap theory produces these results are through four things. The foundation is having great spacing, but the three things you're trying to do are create mismatches, make two people guard one, and win closeouts. So I'm going to take this theory and show it to you in real time, just going possession by possession in this great early season matchup. I believe if you can understand these four concepts, it will change the way you look at basketball. So let's get into it. In this opening possession for Duke, they try and get a lob for Mark Mitchell off the back screen and it's not open. So they're gonna go right into their motion offense, which is ball screen continuity. The reason why they do this is because when you set a ball screen, there's a great opportunity for you to make two people guard one, one of our principles. So as soon as Diallo hedges, there's two people on the ball, which means this defender has to guard the roll and the shake and because they have great spacing, Mark Mitchell is open on this pass. Now he has to win this closeout. And the way that you do that is by either hitting this shot while he's still closing out, or if he's too aggressive, you drive past him, and then you'll force two people to guard one again. So if all that made sense, you're gonna be shocked at how repetitive this game is, even at the highest level. And if that was overwhelming, just stick with me. So now Arizona is gonna set a ball screen. They're looking to make two people guard one as he comes off, but right now they're bad spacing by Caleb Love and he needs to cut through and get out of there. Now as the ball handler comes off the screen, the post defender is forced to emergency switch because the on ball defender got hit with that screen and that creates a mismatch. And because Larson is quicker than Flip, it turns into an easy layup. So before we go to the next possession, here's a quick word from the sponsor of this video. Coaches, if you're looking for a new customizable board, then Hoops King is the place for you. Their website is easy to navigate and you can customize your board down to the most personal details. And having a two-sided feature will allow you to keep track of everything that you need to come game time. And you can select your line options. So whether you're in high school, college, or the NBA, there's a board just for you, which is one of the reasons the Los Angeles Lakers purchased their boards from Hoops King. And I can personally guarantee you that the logo that you customize on the website will look exactly the same way in person, if not better and they guarantee swift delivery so you'll have your new board within 10 days of ordering. The link to their website is in the description or just type in hoopsking.com. So now that you've seen all four principles, let's see how they continue to happen in every possession. Flip goes to set this ball screen knowing that they want a hard hedge and we can make two people guard one. So Flip is going to slip this ball screen to try and create an advantage for the guard to get downhill. And the purpose of this drive is to make one of these defenders help and then you have two people guarding one. But because Caleb Love does such a nice job of cutting him off, nobody helps, no advantage is created. But on this shot fake, Diallo comes over to try and block it. Now there's two people guarding one and Flip has maintained great spacing and you get a rhythm kick out three. And what you're gonna find is on every possession, this is the goal, trying to create an advantage through using these three principles. On this possession, nothing really happens. Diallo runs into flip and they call him for an offensive foul. So on this Duke possession, you get to see a little bit of a chess match. Because Arizona is hard hedging, they're gonna run this back screen so that the big has to help and that's gonna make him slightly late as he tries to get into this hard hedge on the ball screen. So that back screen allows Roach to turn the corner on this hard hedge and make a play downhill. Now you'll see the exact same situation again, two on the ball, and they're reading this tag man with the roll and the shake. So when Roach throws it to the shake, you have the same situation that we had on the other side of the court. The first time Mark shot this and missed it, so now he's gonna try and drive. As he gets to paint, he makes two people guard one, so he can either kick it out to the three or he can try and shoot it, and he ends up missing it. But on this loose ball, McCain gets into the same scenario two people on the ball so he can either throw it back to Mark or he can kick it to flip in the corner. As Arizona comes back on offense, they notice that there's a post seal that they're trying to take advantage of. So Larson's gonna try and throw this ball over the top because he has flip sealed, and you see a great play by Tyrese Proctor as he comes over and gets this steal. So now that Duke is in transition, they need to create great spacing. They need to get two guys to the corner, they should have somebody run to the wing, and their big should run straight to the rim because these four defenders can't guard all five. Now Proctor gets this rhythm three in transition, 
position, but I think he settled because both of these defenders went to the corner so he could have gone all the way to the rim for a bucket or thrown it to the big who is rim running. So they created good spacing but had bad execution. Now Arizona is going to come down on offense and run a screen the screener action. So after this handoff, you're going to get a screen right here for the big and then Diallo's going to set a down screen for the man setting the initial cross screen. And what you should notice is on this catch, Boswell is basically in the same situation that's created from a ball screen. You have two people guarding one and because of where Flip is standing, you might be able to throw the short roll to the big who's going to the basket, but instead he decides to take this mid-range jumper. And to show you that pretty much everybody runs the same stuff in basketball, on this very next possession, Duke is also going to run a screen the screener action. It starts with this out concept, but then he's going to swing the ball to the wing, here's your screen, and then you're going to get a screen for the screener. It's the same thing that you just saw from Arizona, just set up a little differently. But because they didn't create an advantage like Arizona did, they're going to go right into a ball screen. But in this situation, you see the big is dropped, so now Proctor needs to attack the big to get two people guarding one. And when he comes off, Flip decides to pop this ball screen because he's a good three-point shooter, and Duke needs for McCain to stay as far away from him as possible to create good spacing and put stress on this tag. So you can see how repetitive Duke's offense has been so far. Ball screen, make two people guard one, make a play out of it. But as Arizona comes down, they do the same thing. Pass follow for this ball screen. They get two people to guard one and they really need to hit this big because if they can get the ball to the big, it's going to be four versus these three defenders and you have an advantage. But Goswell decides not to pass it, but what happens is there's a switch on that ball screen. So you can see that the ball gets thrown right back and now you've created a mismatch. So from here, the point for Arizona is trying to take advantage of this mismatch and they get a shot right at the charge circle. They just happen to miss it. And this is the possession that most coaches get frustrated with that would be considered a wasted possession. They come down, there's no passes, it's a shot off of the dribble from three, and there's really not a high likelihood it's going to go in. And then watch what happens in transition. The point guard does a great job of getting his eyes up early and notices his teammate is even with the defenders getting back, so he throws it up ahead and he gets an opportunity for an easy layup in transition. This is really good vision by the point guard. So after he gets fouled, they take the ball baseline out of bounds, and Arizona makes the same mistake that they just did a possession ago. They set this quick ball screen, and there's two to the ball, so Caleb Love needs to get it to the big, because now you have this four-on-three advantage, and because he turns it down, he ends up making a bad play, it results in a turnover, and we're going the other direction. And now Duke has another transition opportunity where they need to maintain great spacing and take advantage of these numbers. But they wasted another transition opportunity, because because of how Arizona matched up, he has to take the middle, so if you swing it to the top and kick it one more and Roach runs to the rim, you have a layup and they miss that chance. But because they never gained an advantage, they're going to have to find a way to do it some other way, and you guessed it, here comes a ball screen. Now you're going to see the same hard hedge, but the difference is this defender goes underneath, which makes it hard to throw it to the roll man. So he swings it to the wing, and now you have to win a closeout. Because Caleb Love pressured so much, he drives middle, and then he forces two to guard one with this stunt, and they need to create great spacing so that they could skip it one more to Roach because he's wide open in this slot. Lot for a three. Because they ended up settling for a tough mid-range, Arizona pushes it back in transition, and here's what I want you to see about their spacing. They've got good transition spacing. I'd love to see these wings get to the corner, but because of this bad transition defense by Duke, everybody gets caught right here, and that's how quickly an advantage can be created. So now Larson needs to win this closeout by either shooting the three or driving this bad closeout. Hopefully you're starting to see that winning those closeouts is everything. Now in transition, what do you think Duke's going to do? They're coming back for another drag ball screen. Here's the only problem. They get two to guard one and flip is wide open, but because of this bad spacing as he's going to shallow cut through, it takes away this wide open opportunity to hit the big. So now they're back to square one, trying to find an advantage somewhere, and the ball ends up getting thrown into Mark Mitchell. He feels like he has a matchup in the post that he likes. He goes straight to the rim and gets to the free throw line. These four principles show up in almost every possession of basketball. And if you're interested in learning more about it, I would love for you to check out my book where I have over a hundred videos of this exact same thing from all different levels of basketball. Link is in the description. Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.